What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and as 2023 comes to a close, it is time to give out some awards and some praise to the amazing fights that we had go on in the UFC this year. And today I'm going to be bringing you guys my top 5 favorite fights of 2023. This is just my opinion, this isn't no set in stone list. And I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts on why I think these were some of the best fights of the year and what made them so good. Now this was an extremely tough list to make. There were so many amazing fights this year and it was just really so hard to narrow it down. But I want you guys to know that I'm basing this not only off of just like how fun and entertaining the fight was to watch but also the stakes that were at play here like I think it's a lot more fair to give an edge to a fight that was on a pay-per-view or a main event of a pay-per-view than a great fight that was like the opening of the prelims it's just because the stakes are higher and the difficulty to perform I feel like is also much higher so I'm gonna go into three honorable mentions first because I just couldn't narrow this down to five and then I'll give you my top five a little more in depth so the first honorable mention that i have is manel cap versus felipe dos santos at ufc 293 this was just such an amazing fight and i don't think a lot of people were expecting it dos santos came in on short notice and he gave cop a, a fight they coming in on your debut against a guy like manel cop who is really really talented everywhere is super impressive and that's exactly what dos santos did these two went back and forth almost every round and just beating each other up but Cape did come out on top and rightfully so but it doesn't change that this was just an amazing fight and definitely deserved to be on this list the second honorable mention that I have is Dan Hooker versus Jalen Turner at UFC 290 on International Fight Week another banger of a fight these boys were just throwing and I always remember just Dan Hooker just eating that head kick that Turner threw at him like it was nothing and Dan Hooker's a dog, Jalen Turner's a dog, and these boys put on a hell of a fight. It was a war. We all saw how much of a beating both of these guys took. And yeah, just definitely deserve to have a mention on this list. And yeah, great fight overall. The last fight that I wanted to mention was a prelim fight, and it was Elvis Brenner versus Garam Kudalatse on a fight night. And this fight was just, it was incredible. I mean, at the beginning, Guram was really getting a hold of Brenner. He cut him open. Grem Bremer was bleeding like crazy. And he didn't let that stop him as in the third round, once Guram started to gas out a bit, Brenner put on the pressure and was able to get the finish. It was just an amazing turnaround and just a great fight in general. Both of these guys went to war and it's something you expect in the lightweight division. It's something you'll see a lot more between lightweight prospects and unranked contenders as these guys they're just so talented and so skillful and that's exactly what both of these guys were and hence they put on an amazing fight so now on to the top five coming in at number five we have alexa grosso versus valentina shevchenko one although number two could also have a mention on this list as well these two girls just matched up perfectly with each other the first fight was amazing from the grappling to the striking, you could tell that both of these girls were just evenly matched in all exchanges, and it made for a really interesting fight. You never really knew who was going to win. Obviously, in going into the fight, a lot of people would have thought Valentina, because she was just such a dominant champion for so long, but Grosso had other plans, man, and she's really changed the trajectory of Valentina's career, and she's picked up two wins against her. Well, one was a draw, but she retained the title, so it's a win in my book. And she's just, she's amazing, and so is Valentina. The, this fight was just, it wasn't something we were expecting. It was great to see right before John Jones or Surreal gone on that pay-per-view as well. It was just, that card in general was stacked, but seeing this fight in the co-main just completely shock everybody. I just remember how good it was to see, and yeah. Definitely deserve to be mentioned on this list. I know not a lot of people love women's MMA, but you have to admit that when these two girls fought, it was amazing. Moving on to number four on this list, also on that card with Grosso and Shevchenko, we have Shavka Rachmanov versus Jeff Neal. Now, this one was not one I expected to be super amazing. Like, I thought Shavka was going to go in there and pretty much run through Neal, to be honest, but Neal had other plans and the striking exchanges between these two on the feet was just, it was something like, it was just amazing. Like, both of these guys were just throwing heavy shots. Shavka was 
going forward. He was stomping Neil down, and he didn't care. Of course, there was some clinch stuff, but this fight stayed on the feet majority of the time and was just pretty much a stand and bang. And Neil displayed how good of a fighter he is as well while holding off a guy like Shavkov for that long. And to top it all off, Shavkov getting that standing choke at the end and just walking away after he left Neil just battered and bleeding. It was just, it's exactly what you'd want to see at the end of a war like that. So these guys definitely deserve to have a mention on this list and another incredible fight. Coming in at number three is Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Fazayev at UFC 286 in London, and what a fight this was. I knew from the second this fight was announced that this was going to be an absolute banger. You have two guys who are just incredible strikers, standing in the middle of the octagon and just swinging and throwing and trying to kill the other guy. And I would go as far to say that this was probably one of Justin Gaethje's best performances of his entire career. To do this against a guy like Rafael Fazayev, who Fazayev trains Muay Thai and Thailand and has just been a beast of a striker against every opponent he's fought. To do that against a guy like Fazayev is just, it's incredible. Like, Gaethje completely ripped him apart, gave him a new face, and it was just, it was an incredible fight. It was such a great back and forth. You could tell how high level of strikers both of these guys were, and at any moment you felt like someone could go down here. But these boys, just an incredible fight, an incredible performance, and I think both of these guys can walk away with this one happy, even though Gaethje was the one who came out with the win. I think there was a lot to take from this fight for Fazayev. I don't think he got completely demolished, but Gaethje was just the better man on the night. But their toughness and their brutality made for this fight to be one of the best of the year, for sure. Moving on to the last two fights, and coming in at number two is Brandon Moreno versus Alejandro Pantoja, number three at UFC 290. What a fight this was. I mean, I don't think anybody was expecting this to be crazy, but personally, I was. I think I've been a little high on Pantoja for a while now before he even got into this title picture, and I re and I knew he was going to give Moreno a run for his money. Did I expect this fight to play out the way it did, though? Absolutely not. I mean, this was just a war from start to finish. Both of these guys put their foot on the gas tank and didn't take it off until the end of the fifth round. There was just so many different exchanges in the grappling and the striking. And you could see the dog come out of both of these guys in this fight. No one was backing down. They both wanted that title. And just the way Pantoja went in there against a guy like Moreno, who's been in multiple championship fights before, it was just, it was incredible. Like, he just, he turned into a new type of fighter, put it on a different level. And in my opinion, he won that fight 4-1. to one. But... The fight itself was such a war, and it was so close every round either way that it had to be on this list. I mean, it was such a great back and forth. I think everybody was standing on their feet by the end of that fifth round, and everybody was just such shock at how good this fight ended up being. So yeah, definitely deserves a number two spot, but of course, I think you guys already know what number one is. There was really only ever one answer. And that, of course, is... Alexander Volkanovsky versus Islam Makachev won. And, of course, this was going to be the number one spot on this list. I mean, you had the pound-for-pound pound number one taking on the pound-for-pound pound number two at the time. It's never been done in the sport, and it delivered in every way possible. Islam Makachev heading into this fight was seen as invincible to many. Not a lot of people did anything against Islam and really found any success, but it was different for Alex Volkanovsky. Volkanovsky on a full training camp, and just complete focus, was able to steal rounds off of Islam Makachev, and depending on who you ask, potentially even won the fight. So, this fight too, it was just as high level as it gets. I mean, the grappling exchanges, the striking, the takedowns, the wrestling, the, the control, it was just, you never felt like any guy was safe at any moment in this fight, and that's what makes a great fight. It's the threat of a potential knockout or a submission coming at any moment when you don't expect it. And that's exactly what this fight was. You had Volkanovsky who knew what he had to do going into this fight. He knew he couldn't let Islam take him down and control him. And he went, he trained a lot of wrestling, brought in a lot of wrestling coaches, and went in there and gave Islam his toughest fight of his career. And honestly, I don't know, maybe I would say Volkanovsky won that fight. I think there's still an argument for Makachev, but that doesn't matter. This fight definitely deserved to be named the fight of 2023 
as it was. Of course, the second one, probably not, but this first one was just amazing in every way. And the amount of controversy and discussion it caused after this fight also tells as to how big and how good it really was. That's going to do it for this one, though. Let me know what you guys think. Which one was your favorite fight of 2023? There were so many, but I'm happy with the ones that I narrowed it down to as I think these are fair and these are the ones that make sense. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know which fights were your favorite of the year. There was probably some that I left off this list, but yeah, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. And also stay tuned for more videos like this. A lot more award type videos coming towards the end of 2023 as there's not a lot of news or things going on in the UFC before the end of the year. So I'm going to be making a lot more of these videos because why not? So yeah, stay tuned for more. And I want to thank you guys for watching another one of these videos. I'll see you in the next one.